You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Yeah. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. This is Jerry Montana from Death Division and Down and Dirty, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Check it out. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. As promised, I have my guest on the line from Dan. Well, he's actually been with Danzig. Hell yeah, uh, Attica Seven. I hope I pronounced that right. Green Jello, Death Division is his uh, big one now. None other than Jerry Montano. Jerry, how you doing, my friend? What's happening, man? How's it going? Ah, going pretty good. How are you? I'm doing good. Just uh, up on a Sunday doing my thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about what's new with you uh, in Death Division right now. That division is uh, Tim Young, uh, you know, from um, Divine Heresy, and uh, he plays in Morbid Angel now. Uh, he plays drums in those bands. Super cool dude. And uh, my friend Sean De La Tour, who's a local guy here from L.A., and uh, Rick DeMarco. We've just been uh, started writing and working, and it's just been coming together, and we're doing the studio. Things are good. And where are you actually from, Jerry? Originally, I'm from California. I've been here in Los Angeles for about 20 years. I moved here when I was younger and stayed here, but I was originally from Sacramento, from Northern California. And how did you get started into music, and, and how old were you? God, I don't know. I mean, I, I was, I was re- as long as I can remember, man. I mean, when I was a little kid, I was really into Kiss, you know? I'd seen Gene Simmons breathing fire and spitting blood and all that craziness, and I was just attracted to trying that that whole thing, and that just kind of led to me singing first when I was young in my first band, and then I, you know, people were flaky, <laughs> so I just started writing the songs myself and just doing it on my own, you know? Yeah. All the way from, like, when I was young, like, early teens, you know, playing in bands, and I remember playing clubs with, like, Corrosion and Conformity and Testament wow. and all the, like, Bay Area bands, because I was in Sacramento when I was not even old enough to be in the clubs. <laughs> Now, since you're out in the Bay Area, man, have you met some of the big names out there? Well, I'm sure you have, I mean, because you, you played with Dan Zig and you played with Helio, and you played with several other ones. But what about, like, Metallica and, and Megadeth and things? Have you met those guys? Yeah, you know what? It's funny. Is, uh, Lars from Metallica I met years back, and he was actually going to sign my first band, The Deadlights, to Elektra in 99. Uh, and um, we ended up meeting with the, the president of Elektra, and she ended up kind of swooping it out of his hands. But we were originally going to be on Lars Ulrich's label, the record company, way back in the day when he had this, I don't even remember the band. He had a, this band Systematic and DDT, you know, way a while back. They were always really cool guys, and Lars was a fan of our band, and we ended up, like, meeting up and becoming friends, and he really wanted to sign it, but the label just wanted to keep it for themselves, you know? Mm-hmm. I actually remember... Uh, systematic and and I still have their CD and I loved their CD that they came out with. I thought it was really great. But, yeah, they were they were cool guys. But now you, on the other hand, I actually got to see, if I'm not mistaken, you with the Deadlights on Ozfest. It was Ozfest 2000 or 2001 in Ohio. Yeah, two, it was 2000. I think we just uh, we guys a while ago. I think we just our first tours were with Typo uh, Johnny and. Type of negative and Peter, and then I think we went out with Slipknot, and then we did that. We ended up doing the offsets, which was awesome, man. I mean, that's you know playing with Pantera. That that led to a lot of really cool things and Ozzy, and it was yeah. a really good time. Yeah, because when I first got there, you guys were already on stage playing, and this is like in the middle of the day, and I mean it was so hot, and I was like, these guys are going <laughs> die on stage. <laughs> yeah, I, you know that was that was a fun tour, but. It's rough. I mean, it's a rotating stage, so mm-hmm. you know, you you know, some days we would be like right under the you know the main headliner, and then the next day you're on at like 11 a.m. or something, really early in the morning. Yeah, and they had and, and Taproot. Taproot was on that tour too with you guys. Yeah, they were. Uh, they that's a lot of those bands. We all started out around that time. I think for a lot of us, it was our. Like our first tours, like Kitty and Taproot and Disturbed yeah. and uh, 
a lot of the bands, it was like our first big tours ever, you know, where our, our records had all just came out, you know. Yeah, I had interviewed Wayne Static, and he was talking about that tour. Yeah, that they were on it too, man. They, yeah. they, I think they were actually, our, they were our very first tour, because we were friends with them from, uh, I used to work at a little local bar down here, like way in the day, and me and Blasco, who plays in the Aussie, we used to bartend at this bar, and we got Wayne their first, I think we got Static their first gig ever in L.A. when they said first just moved here. And, you know, so, they, you know, us being friends for so many years, I think, you know, we were always super tight. And when our record came out, they took us out the first time, I think, with Dope and uh, Drain STH. Jerry, did you ever dream of anything like this happening, man, at all? <laughs> yeah, man, that's what, that's what it's all about, you know? That's what you do when you're a kid, you know? I mean, like, growing up, you know, with posters on my walls and, you know, listening to Kiss and Pantera and Megadeth, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that, that's what you dream about, man. And, you know, I ended up, like, touring with all of them, just about, except for Metallica, you know, I mean, for the most part, I mean, we toured with Megadeth and all of them. You know, it, it's 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 a dream come true, really, you know, it, it, it becomes a part of, of your being and what you are, you know? Yeah, and, and, and a lot of these bands are so cool uh, to talk to. I mean, they, they've all been down-to-earth people. You hear all the horror stories about it, but you guys have been absolutely genuine and, and, and gracious to to all those hosts. Yeah, man, thanks. You know, if, if it wasn't for fans and, and cool people, then there would be no you know no outlet for people to hear it and mm -hmm. and for us to be able to do what we do. You know, and you, you know you tend to uh, you know there you know there I think with everybody's career, at some time you tend to take things for granted, but then you know you realize you know you're no different than. You know, the guy that's getting up at 7 o'clock in the morning working a job, you know, it's it's what we do, and we're lucky to be doing it, and nobody's any better than anybody, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, exactly. Now, with you and Death Division, and, and you're out in California, how's the music scene with Death Division? Um, have you played any shows and had a lot of great uh, feedback from the fans from it? We haven't played any shows yet. Basically, what happened is uh, the singer... I had known for a while, and he'd been hitting me up, and I'd been busy with uh, my rock and roll uh, solo band, Down and Dirty, and he, you know, he, I really hadn't done anything, you know, as far as starting something from the ground up in a while, and, uh, you know, since 08, really, I mean, just been my rock band, and it, I've been sitting in with this band, Atticus 7, that's records coming out, and uh, we just started jamming and working it out. It was kind of funny. We, we got together, wrote, a, like two songs in a day, Sean and I, and uh, I'm on my Facebook and I'm, you know, I put a thing out and says, you know, I, we're going to be looking for a drummer and some guy writes on my Facebook says, you should get Tim Young from Divine Energy, that dude's awesome. Mm -hmm. and, and as he said that, I'm thinking like, yeah, right, you know, he's busy out touring and, you know, we're just getting this started and my IM popped up and it was Tim said, hey man, I'm interested, so what's this going on? I was like, wow, man, that's crazy. And the next day is at my house and, We've been working ever since. I have tried to get a hold of uh, Dino Cazares. Hopefully, get him on here, but I haven't heard anything back. But he is a phenomenal guitar player, and Devon Harris. He's an awesome band too. Fear Factory, yeah. yeah. He's, he's he's uh he was really a uh, a good friend of mine, and in the early days when I first started, before when I first had moved to LA, and uh, Dino and Des from Col like the Cold Chamber people, me and Miguel and them mm -hmm. like. I lived with them before they had a record deal. I mean, we were all friends way, way back in the day. But, yeah, really good guy, and he actually helped me get me my first job in L.A. It was like a rock poster shop that way back in the day. <laughs> but that's a cool story to add to your, you know, to, to your stories, though, man, you know, to pass on along. Oh, yeah, man. You know, it's, <laughs> it's funny because, you know, at one time, most of the bands that are out there, Static and Cold Chamber and, yeah. you know, Snot and, uh, uh, you know, System of a Down and Incubus, all of us. I mean, we were all just local bands, but we were all friends and hanging out at cake parties, you know. And <laughs> you know, it would it wouldn't be abnormal to go down to the Coconut Teaser on Sunset and find all seven of us on a, a bill for three dollars on a Wednesday night, you know. <laughs> well, and another thing too, you guys can you can go down the strip and probably go and and do seven or eight concerts if you want to, because there's that many clubs that will let you in. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, you know, it, 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 there is, but there, there isn't. I mean, it's, mm. it's a small community, and we, you know, it's always been pretty tight knit. You know, as, as the years have gone on, everybody's went on to have their successes and, and moved on. But I think it's still there. You know. 
you said that you were doing a solo with Down and Dirty. Who all is in Down and Dirty? Is it just you and the other guy that you mentioned, or do you have other ones? Down and Dirty is me and uh, my buddy Matt Starr, who plays drums. Now he's playing drums for Ace Fraley. He played in The Beautiful Creatures, and he played with our buddy Dizzy from GNR. Mm. And then the guitar player from Death Division, Rick DeMarco, and uh, Filthy Chris, the guitar player for that band. He's a local dude. And um, pretty much that's it. As far as the record goes, I, I pretty much did it on my own. Me and uh, the guitar player Pete Fletcher from this band Pigme Love Circus. He's a phenomenal guitar player. Great, insane, insane guitar player. Great guy. I know him from back in the day. From uh, Pigme's was uh, a lot of us were Pigme Love Circus and 57 Crown. It was Danny Carey from Tool's original band. So we all kind of had that connection and great guitar player and needed somebody that could really come in with this Thin Lizzy rock and roll vibe and he just nailed it as far as like the guitar solos and stuff so it was a great time. When can fans expect anything out from, from Down and Dirty and from Death Division and, and whatever else that you have going on because I'm sure you've got all kinds of things going on. Right now the the Down and Dirty record is finished. It's going to be uh, mastered and I'm, I'm looking at hopefully getting that out by the end of the summer. Death Division, we're working on a seven-song EP, which we've been, we've got all the music recorded for. We're in the process of doing the, finishing uh, the vocals. I'm going to have a video out probably next month. I don't know if you saw the, the teaser trailer for the short film that I, that I wrote and directed. Uh, it has like a little piece of the music on it. That's on the Death Division Facebook. So that will be out. You know, it's a cool little short film. I'm into horror movies. I ended up getting, uh, Andrew Bernarski, who played Leatherface in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre's buddy line, to uh, act in it, and he ends up killing Lacey Connor from Rock of Love uh, <laughs> and Van Halo. He's interviewing the band. It's pretty cool. That that should be out next month. So I'm that, still editing and finishing that up right now. Now that that's that's cool. That is really cool. What would you say your favorite horror movie is, Jerry? Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> Probably The Beyond or. Uh, Black Sunday, uh, The Devil's Ring. I like a lot of obscure things. I I, I was always kind of into horror films, but Glenn Danzig, all the years playing with him and hanging out with that guy, we were always shopping for DVDs, and he just has a vast, you know, he, he knows everything about all horror films and stuff. So over the years, it just grew and grew and grew, and I got to see a lot of cool things, you know. How was it playing with Glenn Danzig and working with the Circle of Snake CD? How was that? It was great, you know. Tommy Victor and I go back probably 20 years, almost. Johnny Kelly from uh, Typo is a drummer. He's one of my best friends. I think at the time I was out in Palm Desert, and I was uh, working with John Garcia from Caius and his band, Unita, uh, my buddy Arthur, and uh, the bass player left the band or whatever, and I, you know, Glenn already had knew of me, and I got on the phone with him, and... I went, you know, I basically I didn't even audition. I just was like, hey, man, I would love to do it. And he was cool, super, super, super cool guy. And we ended up getting along, and I didn't even have to audition. But even when I did go in, I mean, I was a fan when I was a kid, so I already knew the songs, you know. It was like, yeah. when, when I went and played with him. He was like, you know, you know, how many songs can you do? I'm, you know, I'm like, how many songs can you throw at me? I, I think I played like 25 songs within the first day. But, you know, I was a fan already you know, from being a kid, and, and we had been, we would known each other and been friends for a good 10 years almost before I had uh, joined the band, you know, and he was, all, he was always very uh, generous, really nice guy, very, very sweet, very, very good dude, man, I have nothing but good things to say about Glenn Danzig. Do you think over the years, especially with metal, that it's changed tremendously, or would you say no? Yeah, I, you know, I think, uh, it's, it's hard for me to say, I mean, I think, I think that it, it's, it's relative. I think that, you know, new things come and, and, you know, people jump on that bandwagon and, and there tends to be a lot of a certain, you know, type or genre of it. So I think, I think for the most part, it's relative. It stays the same, but the industry has changed a lot and, uh, and, you know, it's, it's become a harder place for bands to thrive or even come up in this time right now. I mean, things are a little on the, on the rough side and I think, it, it's hard on the fans as well because bands and, and labels are trying to overcompensate from the lack of money and what they've lost by, you know, and the bands are getting out on the road more, which is good for the, for the fans, but 
I mean, you can only pay for so many shows and so many $35 t-shirts, you know, Mm -hmm. four or five days a week, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, right. A lot of these concerts I've been here too, they, they, like these festivals, like a lot of them have been having problems financially because of, yeah. because of the economy and stuff. But you would think that with the big name bands that they would draw a, a, a lot of people into these. You know, they, I think they still do, but you know, again, it's, it's hard when everybody's out there trying to make a dollar, you know, and, mm-hmm. and there's only so much money to go around. I mean, you know, Fans work their asses off to go to the shows and buy T-shirts and and support what they can, but it's it starts to become oversaturated, you know. Now back to your music and everything, Jerry. The the writing is it just mainly just you, or does everybody else who's in your your bands with you do they all contribute? Uh, we all contribute. I mean, you know, we'll uh, come and sit down in the room, and if a riff is cool, or then you know, then we'll play on it and you know write another part. You know, and Sean and I tend to write the music. But we work with everybody, and you know, it's we're we're very uh, diplomatic about it. It's it works out. But you know, I mean, if something's great, then it works no matter who wrote it. And if it sucks, then it sucks, and we don't use it. You know, that's that's how it is. There's no nobody has a monopoly on uh, the you know the writing per se. I I like to keep it open between all of us, and that way everybody's happy, and and, and it also gives us some diversity as well. When fans come out to see your guys' show, what do you want them to remember you by? How do you want them to remember you? Well, you know, it's just, I think I think it's about the songs. You know, it's about the music. It's about the songs and having a good time. And, you know, it's, it, people people go to shows and listen to music because they want to feel something and feel a certain way and and be a part of something. And if uh, if you don't do that, then I think you haven't done your job. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, definitely. What can they expect from you guys at your show? You know, I think at, at this point, you know, like I said, you know, you expect to hear some heavy, heavy ass fucking songs, and uh, and and to see a great show, great live show. How does it feel, man, to stand on stage and to hear a lot of people singing your music? Ah, it's the best feeling in the world. I mean, that, you know, that's that's why people keep doing it. They're, you know, their their entire lives. It's almost like a drug. You know, I mean, you, you get you get a feeling of of. Uh, of what it feels like to be standing behind the curtain when the light goes down and people start screaming. It's, it's a, it's a rush of energy every single day, regardless of, you know, where you are, how you're feeling, if you're sick, if you're, if you're on top of the world, if you're, if you're feeling down. I mean, that is just, that, is, that injection, you know, I mean, there, there's no feeling that compares to it. It's amazing. I couldn't imagine standing on stage and, and to hear people sing a song that, that my band had done or anything, I I'd just probably faint. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, because you know, it's you create something from nothing, yeah. literally. You know, I mean, it's it's like, you know, to hear, you know, of any of the songs that I've done over the years, you know, uh, even from you know the Hell Yeah stuff of you wouldn't know or Alcohol and Ass or you know uh, Circle of Snakes or uh, you know. Sweet Oblivion by the Dead. You know, all, all these bands over the years, when you, when you hear it on the radio or you see that people connect with it or know the words and you hear them singing it when it was like born in your garage, you know, or, or in your bedroom, you know, it's, it's, it's a great feeling. It's really cool. That's the ultimate payment should be if you're a musician. Oh, absolutely. Because you, you work from, like you said, you work from scratch and you build on that song and you get to the point where, okay, this is our baby. This is what everybody should listen to, and if they hear it and to sing it, to me that that makes it all worth everything that you've worked for. Oh yeah, it's it's the, it's the best feeling in the world. It really is. Now, do you guys prefer clubs or festivals, or does it really matter? You know, I like I like both. I mean, cl- the clubs clubs feel good because you're you're tight and it's close and it's hot as hell, and uh, and the festivals are always fun too because there's a shitload of people. You're having a good time, and generally you're on a bill with you know ten or fifteen of your you know, other bands that you're friends with. So, you know, they're, they're, they're all, they're all fun. I mean, no show is a bad show. You know what I mean? It could be an acoustic gig, you know, for 40 people, or it could be a, sh- a festival for 80,000. I love them all, you know? I know this is a hard question, and I always ask the hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what would you say is your most memorable show that you've ever played? Oh, man, I don't even know. Probably, um... I don't know. I mean, there's been so many. Probably, you know, some of the hometown gigs with maybe 
playing with, uh, you know, doing the very first show with, uh, Danzig when he came, brought Doyle in and we did the first Misfits reunion-esque tour. That was probably the, one of the most memorable ones with that were like, you know, Super Joint Ritual, Good Friend of Mine, Phil Anselmo's band. And, uh, actually Tim, Tim Young was on that with Nile back then, but that was probably one, you know, seeing the, the kids break the barricades and rush the stage and destroy <laughs> the venue. You know what I mean? You tend to remember those things or, you know, a, a lot of that kind of stuff. I think probably my very first tour with Typo Negative, you know, I mean, before I become friends, you know, really close with Pete Steele, waiting in my RV, looking out the window, because I was such a Typo fan, like, whoa, there's Pete Steele, you know, like, yeah. wow. That, I mean, that, those those were, like, memorable moments of shows, playing with Typo Negative, playing with Ozzy, you know, Danzig, you know, playing, you know, my first huge festivals in Europe and just the whole, you know, I, I could go on forever. Probably... You know, I mean, the first time I got on stage and played with Pantera or, you know, the very first uh, gasoline show when I was in a band with Dimebag Daryl and Kenny Paul and wow. their cover band. I mean, those are like some of the, you know, the most memorable, you know, times. I think being on stage with Dime and Vinny and Jerry Cantrell, you know, playing Sin Lizzy songs in front of, you know, a thousand kids. Amazing, you know. I get nervous just to interview you guys. <laughs> 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 opening for Motorhead too that was pretty incredible I mean a lot of that cool stuff you know you have actually lived a dream my friend I mean that, <laughs> that is really awesome well, it's you know it's a it's a you know uh, constantly evolving you know what I mean yeah. I've like you know been in medium sized bands I've been in big bands I've had great successes and you know, had you know fallen and had failures and hard times as well, just like anybody else does. Mm -hmm. You get up, you dust it off, and you know you realize what what it is and and why you do what you do, and you know you grow to really love and appreciate the people around you, the fans around you, and and the you know the crap that you've been blessed with, and you and you, you move on. And that's what it's all about: growing. You know. Jerry, I want to thank you for being on the show this evening. You've been an awesome interview and guest. I uh, appreciate it. Um, I wanted to say yeah, yeah. <laughs> I definitely want you back on later on if you don't care, maybe do an acoustic song on here possibly, if at all. Yeah, no problem. We could do it. No problem. And uh, I was going to see if you care to do me a promo. It's a little long, but hopefully you get it on the first try. Yeah, no problem. All right. This is Jerry Montana from Death Division and Down and Dirty, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Check it out. Thank you, Jerry, my friend, and best of luck. To yeah, man, thanks a lot. And stay in touch, and, uh, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll work out, you know, acoustic thing or, you know, or whatever else you need. No problem. Cool. Thank you so much. No problem, man. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Jerry Montano from Death Division and Down and Dirty and Danzig and Hell Yeah and Attica 7, Green Jello. He's been with so many bands. I want to thank him for being on the show. And <laughs> Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.